Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the LaRouge Rugby Podcast. Gentlemen, Merry Kittness. I'm very excited to talk about this episode. Uh, we've got some uh, hot button topics to bring up, especially in the fashion industry. Um, Derek, Stu, how are you guys doing? I'm, I'm doing great, Dan. Merry, Merry Kittmas to you, Stu. Merry Kittmas to you as well. Uh, Merry Kittmas to everybody that is out there. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed your day of singing Kittmas carols and, <laughs> you know, leaving out Kittmas cookies for um, Santa Claus as he dropped off. Um, 13 pretty amazing kits for the uh, Major League Rugby season uh, in 2021. Yeah, Merry Kittmas to you guys. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, some newer color combinations to uh, discuss today. Um, you know, some things that uh, will uh, be on uh, my Kitmas list, uh, some that I'd use instead of coal. But, you know, we'll, we'll get into that discussion later. <laughs> yeah. and, and also, too, like some teams, some fans got like those extra special Kitmas gifts where we got some roster announcements. We got some uh, big name signings heading to certain teams and uh, – this felt like, I mean, with the exception of like a Toronto Arrows announcement, one of the uh, busier Canadian signing weeks. So uh, lots to dive into here. Yeah, it has been quite the exciting week for uh, Canadian rugby fans, you know, with uh, Rugby Canada who's holding their high performance camp. It it feels like there's finally, you know, bits and pieces of, of Canadian rugby news that's being kind of tossed out into the ethos. Um, but let's get started from the top. And we're going to start with with our uh, little Kitmas uh, celebration um, last week, uh, MLR uh, dropped the kits for the 2021 season. Uh, Paladin really kind of hit it out of the park for a lot of teams and did a really good job this year. But uh, I'm going to start with you, Stuart. I want you to kind of tell me about, you know, who are your top three teams that you think really kind of set themselves from the pack? So I'm going to go with uh, three kits in general because there is the home and away kit for each team. And, you know, I think... Uh, one of the two has really helped the team more than others. But I think the one I'm going to open with is the kit that is on every um, uh, rugby player north of the border's mind, which is the new Arrows Away kit. Gentlemen. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I agree. They, sh I agree. they should have sent a poet. Yeah. They should have sent a poet. Dude, I, Shakespeare doesn't have the words to describe how beautiful this kit is. Um, it's yeah, dude. It is. It's stunning, man. Stu, I'll let you. I've 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 gushed over this kit enough on my review of Layman's Sports, so I'll, I'll let you take the floor and just t tell the fine people how just absolutely stunningly beautiful, amazing that this this it's, arrows kit is. I think okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's great color co combination. Obviously, the blue and white are the colors of Toronto. Um, the uh, choice of going with chevrons as hoops, I think, is fantastic. Keeping in with the ethos of arrows up, yeah, that's, uh, that's just an unreal, like, little personal touch to the team. I absolutely love that. Completely agree, Stu. Continue. Yeah. And uh, the fans have been asking for it for a while, and now it's finally here a collar, an actual rugby collar to uh, don on the shirt. <laughs> And yeah, that's literally the only reason why I wore the 2006. I don't have the arrows kit yet. So I was like, I just want to wear something with a collar on it for today to celebrate kit. Miss it's so. uh, it's, it's on my Christmas list. I, oh, yeah. I tried, I try to keep my nose out of when my, my wife buys uh desert Christmas shopping, but this was very heavily, heavily suggested. So <laughs> who knows? Well, well, um, it depends if you're a certain size and I, I'm not going to insinuate anything here, um, Dan, but um, I've, been looking on uh, the rugby shop.com and looking on the arrows page and they have already sold out of sizes large double xl and quadruple xl now this doesn't mean you can't get a kit at all it just means that it may arrive a bit later than you hope there you know what it's estimates it's are january and february you know i've i've got um one of the supporter jerseys uh, from the first year of of the arrow so it's actually quite large like it's it's a it's a it's a huge jersey um and we like did the measurements and everything to make sure that it would fit and it's still quite a large jersey so i did a little bit of research so hopefully this jersey fits a little better we'll see it'll be interesting to see uh i know at least with the arrows up 
uh, fan page. We get a, we can do a little bit of a swap and sell with somebody else if they have <laughs> uh, similar sizing issues uh, as as I do. Um, but yeah, it's it's an exciting jersey to 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 look at. Yeah, they've also mentioned that um, the numbering on the back will be maple gold, which is harking back to uh, the team's maple roots. gold. <laughs> Hey. What, do, what does that even mean, maple you, gold? I love the gold. I just okay. think that they, they don't even need to add the maple. Just say it's, you know what though. On, I, Ontario Arrows gold. Call it that. Maple you gold seems oh, honestly, I do completely love it. I think one of you know the looks of the kit aside, I think the one thing that I really loved about this past week um, with the kit reveal is the kit drop was the day after the NHL did their massive reverse <laughs> retro jersey drop, and I mean. Speaking of like, it's like some of which I mean for the NHL, some of those kit, some of those jerseys were unreal. Some of them were utter trash, and there was no middle ground. Um, but um, but the point being, besides like we got to see the way the NHL did it. Um, the Argos had dropped their new jerseys the day before too, so you kind of got to see the way they did it. Um, and obviously, those college football teams are kind of or like college teams are constantly kind of unveiling new kits and stuff as well but it's like i think the one thing that i really liked just before we actually before even like talking about the kits themselves was the way that like the mlr revealed all the kits felt very like like big league um it felt like very they had you know obviously all the videos of the kits and stuff and maybe they could have done something maybe they would have done something like last year they brought in all the captains for a photo shoot or whatever but obviously covid's getting in the way of that so i thought you know like having the videos of all of the kits like that were kind of like the little spinning graphics of everybody i thought was really good i loved like you know teams like new england put out like the video explaining the all the behind like what the the meaning behind their kit was new england also showing i'm sure this is a kit we're going to talk about if you pop the collar it has together we ride so like the special like team slogans on it um i thought like you said it's like the arrows calling him like maple gold on the back i saw that the dallas jackals had jackal green as their official color and which is something that like every like major pro sports team across the league does it's like you know teams aren't like it's like the leafs are a specific shade of blue like the kings are a certain shade of black or whatever right um and like every like even like you know dallas with the jackal green right in their city the hockey team the dallas stars they have what they call victory green right so it's like if you go across the board in pro sports all of the team's colors have these like little nicknames because they all obviously for copyright reasons and stuff they all have to have they all have to be like kind of slightly different right um so i kind of love seeing that the mlr team's kind of buying into that a little bit um i thought old glory had an awesome graphic where they showed like every angle of the kit it's kind of zooming in on all the special parts of it um you know the sponsors the dc flag being on the shorts and stuff was something that they pointed out which i thought was really cool um and I, I don't know. I just like I loved I loved the way the MLR kind of rolled out the kits this year. I thought it was, um, it you know it it really made them like look like like live up to like the major league title and stuff. I thought they did a honestly like I thought they did a great job of like rolling it out. And you know hopefully hopefully that kind of continues into the future. Um, but back to the kits, gentlemen. Stu, you only gave us one kit here, so uh, still got to yeah. hear the rest of your top three. That is correct. Well, you mentioned it uh, briefly. Um, so I'm going to say uh, New England's home jersey is another, you know, home run hit from Paladin. It's not that much different from the 2020 kits for New England the, for their home the, uh, team. The stripes are a little um, narrower. That's about the, uh, that's the, that's yeah, about the difference. But yeah. that's the thing. It's, it's like my minor differences. So if you had the 2020 home kit, you know, you can just play it off and say, oh yeah, you know, there was just like a printing error. So, but it's a new one, totally. <laughs> um, and uh, the third kit I'd say is um, Utah's away kit. Now, Ooh. gentlemen, you know my opinion on uh, white away kits. And so I'm glad that there's a team out there that doesn't have a white away kit or white as its predominant color and seeing as the two other teams that utilize red in their kit which is san diego and atlanta um, neither of their kits is predominantly red either so this not only allows um, utah to stand out i also think it's very well done in an artistic sense so the mountains that the 
used uh, for the design, I think are just beautiful. Uh, obviously, um, unique to no, it, it's it's the one thing you need with a kit. You want to be able to have your fans um, switch through the channels, see uh, rugby being played, and if there's a red kit, they go, "That's Utah," and it, it, it's easily identifiable and uh, being won in games next season. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I loved Utah's. I thought Utah's was great. I think I gave that one an A minus. Um, the red one. I like the black one too. Um, they went with the uh, the topographic map for that one. Kind of sublimated on that. So I thought like that's an unreal overall kit. The one thing with the black one to me that I'm not completely sold on is the number on the front. Um, I don't necessarily think it looks that bad, was something, but I'm just um, I'm just not sold on it. I don't know. I what don't you mind. I, think. I, I, so. <clears throat> I got I got a couple things. Uh, so I had new I had New England and Utah uh, as my top three kits. Okay. Um, the New England away kit, I don't know what what it is, but for some reason I just see it and it, it seems more like a polo shirt to me than a rugby jersey. I I, I don't know if it's because it's mostly white at the top. It, I, it's it must, it's gonna be something I'm gonna need to see it on the pitch and then enjoy it more. I think it's a really nice kit, but for some reason I see that and I don't see a rugby jersey. I see a a golf shirt. Um, I really like Utah's uh, combination. Um, I've been pretty vocal every time we talk about jerseys on how MLR has a problem with too many teams having similar color palettes. And I'm going to talk about that later, but I think that Utah had the best black and red combo for both their home and away kits out of the three. Uh, it, it, it just, I, it just seemed that they were, they took the, they took really cool chances without it being too like, kind of crazy kind of like last year with with rooney with their their pinstripes on their on their jerseys i think that was a crazy chance that they took and it's you know they didn't missed work. Yeah. didn't work um i think that these are really yeah. cool details that kind of have that will have value to their fans and and it's gonna turn out nice when it looks on when they you know hit the pitch uh yeah. my other problem and it actually has to do with the arrows oh, no. and it has oh, nothing no. to do with the away oh, jersey. No. I love the away jersey. It actually has to do with their home jersey. And it's this jersey that I'm wearing right now. And I think part of that is the problem is that this jersey was from 2019. Like it did, this was before they even stepped onto the pitch. This is what they uh, had for sale. And I think that I love consistency. I love that they're going for consistency. I think that you see that New England did it and they're doing it well. I would have just liked to see minor details added to the jersey. Like when you look at the uh, the World Cup jerseys for Canada, having like the Maple Leafs as part of like just like the top chest part of the area mm -hmm. would have been a really, really cool detail to add to this jersey to kind of just step it over the top. And, you know, I just seem it just seems that it's just there needs to be a little bit more to this Jersey. You know, we've had two years of the same Jersey. It would have been nice to add something little like that, like little Maple Leafs or, you know, um, a, a cool striping or piping somewhere. Like it, it's, it's just the same Jersey three years in a row. And, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm big. I, I understand keeping things consistent and, you know, it, it's a hard pill to swallow when I'm a hockey fan, I'm a football fan. Those jerseys don't change typically. Like you rarely ever get different home and away jerseys from any other major sports in North America, but like this is rugby. And if you're going to release different kits for your away Jersey, which is this new striped one. And then they've got their away white, which is Sunday. a rehash of last year, but it's still different than their white Jersey. They had the year before that. And you look at other teams have not had the same, like Nola's had different jerseys their whole entirety. We we gotta we gotta figure out which which you know which camp are we in? Are we gonna stick with the North America form of, of uniforms and, and have that consistency, or are we gonna have different kits every year like rugby? Okay. So that, it's a it's a little nitpick. Like I love yeah. that they have options. I like that there that there is still there's kind of the, the plain one, they've got the one that's got the really nice stripe. I love that one last year, and then they got this amazing new away jersey. I'm just what camp are we sitting in? Uh, I'll be honest. Are we going to tiptoe? I think, I think the one thing that the home kit needs, a collar. 
Okay, yeah. I was, that would have been a little okay, detail. Callers, that would have been great. Callers aside, callers aside, everyone, we all know callers are great. Okay, it's, it's kind of interesting, Dan, because I think like listening to that, I kind of, I completely disagree with you, but at the same time, kind of see what you're saying. Um, I like, like if you're talking like little details, because, okay, so going off this, my my top three or whatever, I had the Arrows, um, New England, and then I had Houston. And then if we're going to add the fourth one, I had Seattle. So, and if you kind of look at that to me, Seattle did not change a single thing about their kit. It's a fantastic kit. They didn't change anything. Houston, the away kit, the yellow one, which I think is magnificent. They didn't change a thing on that. On the black home kit, they removed a couple of the little yellow highlights like around like the uh, like the cuff on the arm and near the collar of the kit. Um, so kind of minor. And they got rid of the uh, sublimated um, saber tooth cat. Yeah. And then they, they like, so the pattern, the sublimated pattern is a little bit different. So it does kind of fall into, I guess, you, Dan, I guess it kind of falls. That's, into that, but that, that's what I'm saying. Tweaks. That's all I but, wanted was minor tweaks and we got nothing. But here's, here's my thing though. I'm going back to your other point too, right? I think right now we have a league that is four, like four years old now going into its, uh, what's going to be the fourth year of it. Right. So you have a bunch of teams that are basically four years old. And then, you know, some teams there's the, the slight, like, you know, maybe they've had like, like the arrows had an exhibition season or something before, but so all the teams are basically four years old. All the league is four years old. And I think you have to go and it's like, you need to build the brand. Right. And the brand has to be the thing that's recognizable the most. Um, and I think if you have your Jersey and you have your kit, that is, if you can make a kit that's consistent all the way through, right. It's like, I so does Nola Gold build. fail? Does does Seattle Seattle still has three different kits? Like they all just it's made not. minor tweaks and changes to their jersey. I'm not asking them to go Austin level of change. See, see but that, that's the thing though, right? It's like I think you look at a team like New York. New York's going into year three with three completely different looking kits, right? Um, and a different logo this year, which I actually really like the logo. I do. But like it. I think going into that though, you're even saying minor tweaks and stuff, right? But I think even kind of going into that, if you look at the most iconic brands in North American sports, think um the Yankees, the Cowboys, the Canadians, the Dodgers, the Packers, um, like you think teams like that, the Bulls, the Celtics, they don't change their jerseys. They, they're like, the Yankees haven't changed their jersey ever. The Yankees fought tooth and nail to not get corporate logos on their jersey. They're now losing that battle. Yeah. But it's like, so, they don't change at all. That's the most iconic ones, though. If you think of if you think of like other teams and stuff, like look at teams like um, the Thrashers in in hockey, right? They showed up, in, they showed up and were gone in under tw like twenty ish years, right? But they had like four or five different jerseys in that time, right? Like I don't think I think I. But think are we? Uh, but the, here's the thing: this is so. Like, are we saying that this is this is it? Like, is this the no. jersey that we want to stick with? Because I, I think, don't think I that think this you... is. I don't think this is. This says that this is like iconic enough to change like this this is it's just a blue jersey with a white collar i all mean right, it, all right. we are That's my we are a point. red stripe we are a red stripe away from just being the french jersey like, so, okay, that's that's my other that's my other point though, because I heard this and I heard this argument too with um the LA Giltini's jersey. Is everyone being like it's kind of boring and stuff? We are talking about a sport when we're like, okay, this is solid, it's a solid color, it's solid blue. Giltini's is almost all white. We are talking about a sport where the most iconic team is black and nothing else, right? They but they've also been doing black. that for like generations. Exactly. But my point also, is, my point is, is that though? that's the best looking. That's the, is the All Blacks have, in my opinion, the best looking kit in sports. Like not even just in rugby. It's like it's intimidating. It looks good. You mix it with the haka, their whole brand image. Dan, you're talking about how they go through like minor tweaks. The only thing that they change is is the collar going to be? But that's not true. If you year? look at their World Cup jersey that they had, it had special details that a fan is going yeah. to notice. It like, does. I, it has like, special details. But that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those little pieces of of, of a jersey that it just doesn't have. You know, okay. like, th this jersey just doesn't have. And I and I I'm looking at the 2021 jersey, and again, it's just it's just it might look different on the pitch, but it doesn't have it. It doesn't yeah. have those little details. It doesn't have anything on the collar saying, you know, stand right. on guard. Like, you know, it doesn't the, they put all that they put all that love into the away jersey. 
They did. And I, then the, and you know what, though? I think that's a good thing, though, because it's like, is that not – they're the only team that unveiled three jerseys. They went with the, the third jersey route, right? So but they didn't have like, to do anything because they, they just kept the jerseys from last year. Yeah, exactly. So that makes <laughs> If I may interject, yeah. I'm going to talk about the – um, other side of this and it goes back to you Dan in that you're saying that you have uh, subtly um, asked your uh, wife to send a letter to Santa so that he can uh, bring the new away jersey uh, for Christmas and the reality is that for a lot of people Christmas is going to be a bit harder this year and I and I agree with you I agree that you know jerseys can have like we don't have to do like a complete uh color change or anything like that um or we just like some minor tweaks would be grand um however i do respect the decision and it's not just them it's uh, seattle as well it's also uh the gilgronies who have they've now they have made like subtle changes but not major enough to completely differentiate from the 2020 season and especially for Toronto, is that we were unfortunate in the fact that we didn't have any home games this season. So if you could take yourself back to Christmas of last year and ordering the um, 2020 jerseys, and then a few months later find out that uh, Mm -hmm. you won't be able to see that kit being played in uh, 2020, I would say that the by continuing that jersey for the 2021 season, um, it puts the supporters in a bit of a better spot if they already have the 2020 jersey to then have it um, commuted into 2021. And I think for a lot of people that they would be grateful for the fact that back when they um, were financially stable mm-hmm. and... Uh, 2019 or early 2020 that they are if they are not in that position now that they don't have to spend and i i get that Stuart. i i again i want to reiterate i don't want them to change a lot of this jersey i wanted them to add a little bit and that that's what new england did yeah. new england yeah. changed minor details the piping on it the the writing on the back of the collar like i don't want a mass overhaul of the home jersey i wanted to add like just a little no, bit of detail we'll that see. shows that there's there is a progression in how this jersey is going to look. I, I that's I see, that's all I, I that's all I, I want. See, I see your point on that, but I've I've also seen people commenting that like some te- they don't like some teams because they're the exact same. Well, don't put um, that on me. No, don't I'm not putting someone that on else's I'm not evil on, on Dan. All right, I got enough put, shit going on. You. I don't need you putting other people's stuff on me. Yeah, well, that's what you're here for. You're here for me I to guess yell so. at you. That's kind of um, my job. That's yeah. That's the only plan. You just sit there, ask questions, and get yelled at. That's the whole formula of this <laughs> podcast. Um, but I think the I think like I think I kind of agree. If you want to add tiny details and stuff, that's cool. Um, I like um, Atlanta. I think had a pretty nice tiny detail. It's slightly different than last year. A um, little bit of a gradient kind of thing going up that they added well, we're, but they we're gonna have an interesting discussion yeah. coming up next then oh, okay oh, i was just saying they they changed the map of atlanta to the snake skin right to reflect the new fan given nickname of mm-hmm. the rattlesnakes right so like i think uh or the rattlers so i think like that's like that's a nice little tweak of detail um seattle uses um the uh season Skyline. ticket holder names in the stripes mm-hmm. um which is cool but i would imagine if they have new season ticket holders or or like the season ticket holder changed over. Hopefully they didn't lose season ticket holders, but hopefully they have new ones. I would imagine maybe their jerseys are a little bit different because they have to add new names to it. Or I honestly don't know how Seattle does that or how that works, but yeah. um, but kudos to them because that's a super cool idea. Um, but um, I even, like, even Rooney yeah. did a really cool idea with adding but, some of the neighborhoods onto their, yeah, that's their cool. away that jersey, cool. which is, which is, it's such a cool idea. Like you're on your, your, your way you're traveling. It's, it's a cool reminder yeah. of who you're playing for. Now, I think, now gentlemen, we're going to move hold on. on. One more point though. One more point. Before all right. Go. All right. I think, I think going back to kind of Stu's thing, how it's like, you know, one of the, the benefits from the fans point of view too, is that, you know, if, if you don't drastically change the kits, you can kind of keep wearing them and stuff. Um, right. And it's like, it still looks updated and like, it still looks updated. It still looks current when you show up to the games. But I think, like, you know, I, like, I wonder, like, like, would you be like, I'm not saying that they wear them, 
or whatever. But like, how do you guys feel about selling kits with players' names on the back? I think it's a great idea. I mean, you run into the problem. There's some guys like especially like Gaston Mirez who plays multiple positions. No, but, but I think you just you throw Mirez 14 on it. Yeah, I think like, I, I think mean, it's I a great idea. idea. I think, but I like, think. I, I think, think the disappointing thing is I'm not going to be able to see those yellow jerseys was, on the back. Yeah, yellow numbers. I think that was one thing too, right? Like we, we were talking about um, the arrows kit, how they have the gold numbers on the back, where it's like if they don't, if the arrows don't sell kits with names or numbers on the back, right? Or numbers at the very least, it's like the fan kits aren't going to have that really cool kind of throwback element of the kit, mm -hmm. which is part of what makes the kit really cool. Um, so I'm like, I'm kind of like, that would be cool to see, but it's also like, I also think sometimes it's like Stu, like I'm going to use Stu as an example, Stu here, like you love this kit, right? So you're going to buy one. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. So you're going to buy one, but you're going to buy one, right? Yeah. Just one. Like why would, right. So it's like, I think too, if you did that, it's like, would you buy, but if there's names on the back, would you buy more inclined to maybe buy a Rumball one, a Montero one, an Ng one, a Quatrin one. I don't, yeah. You like hookers a lot, Stu. So I'm going to give you both Ing and Ing and uh, Quatrin there. But like, but I'm just saying, it's like, would you? Is that something that is? I'm I'm just curious. I'm not saying like that I'm not being like we need this now. But I'm just kind of I'm curious to see like the gauge on like how people feel about. I would at least I, I probably wouldn't buy one with a name, but I would definitely buy one with a number. Okay, Stu. Uh, I would like the option to have my own name on the back, and I think okay, a that's lot of fans thing, would yeah. like that as well. All right, what number? What number would you put on the back if you had your own name? Uh, eight. Eight? Yeah. Dan, D Dan, you said two? We all know it would be 16, Dan. We all know it would be 16. <laughs> you know what? We're going to move on now. <laughs> We're going to move on. Uh, so, you know, what's the most... Uh, now I'm going to ask you guys about who, who kind of disappointed you the most, other than Derek. <laughs> uh, you know what, Stu? You're going to go first because I'm so, I'm so mad at him right now. Okay, so I have... I'm disappointed in three teams but for three completely separate reasons wow. Ooh. um so starting off la and i'm disappointed because they only gave us one jersey okay that's now, fair now here's that's the thing fair, if, if they come out with a fantastic away jersey like it blows your socks off do they get taken off the list only if it has a collar it's gotta have no, a collar. no i don't want la collar. to have well, a collar honestly i don't well, i don't because you know they, what at this point i want L I was gonna say at this point, I feel like LA could be like sleeveless or something, Ooh. and then that would be like that'd be like the team's mo. They come out wearing like a sleeveless kit, or I have no idea. Uh, but who knows, man? I well, I'm I'm gonna go down the teacher route and say, well, the homework was due on this date, so if it's not in at that time, then you don't get full. Yeah, marks. yeah. If you submit, if you submit an A plus piece of work late, it still gets docked marks and becomes a B anyway. Exactly, exactly. Um, the Second team I'm disappointed in, um, and I just believe that this is an out-and-out -out bad kit, especially compared to last year, has to be San Diego. Okay. I, um, so one of my friends uh, back home, Andy, he's a big Saracens fan, and he chose uh, San Diego to follow because they wore, um, at the time, uh, Saracen's colors, so black and red, and then sometimes white and red. He, know, he knows Utah's there, right? Utah and Atlanta. Yeah, he know he knows, but he doesn't care. He he had to pick one back in the uh, original days of uh, twenty eighteen, and so he. Yeah, I think for me, Stu, I don't know if this is the same reason why you're disappointed in it, but I think one the faux collar thing, I didn't really. Like, yeah, I'm just like it would have been cooler if you just went proper collar. Um, that would have been cool, but. My second gripe is, in my personal opinion, having gray as your main color never looks good. No. Like, unless you're a baseball team on the road, like, I don't see why anybody would use gray as their primary color on a jersey. Um, and even baseball teams, like, it doesn't look good. Like, I mean, when yeah. was, like, I mean, even like around Toronto, when was the last time you saw somebody wearing the gray Toronto Blue Jays jersey? It's always it's always yeah. the white or the blue one. It's just yeah. it's um, even like the Yankees. I'll go back to the Yankees talking about how like their their pinstripes are the most famous part. It's like their other ones just it's gray with New York written across it, right? Like it's like I don't know. I just for me, I've never seen a gray jersey that I like. So that was just kind of I like that's kind of my gripe on San Diego a little bit. Yeah. The black one, I don't I don't mind the black one that much. I think the idea of having the sublimated gladiator helmet on it's kind of cool. Um yeah. 
but I don't, I don't mind the black one, but it was just uh, the gray. I just, if the gray one was white instead of gray, I would like it a lot more, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think, uh, I think also, well, the uh, piping that's like a block that goes from the shoulder blades and then straight down, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's not going to be complementary to any of the uh, front row out there. <laughs> I don't think so at all. Um, and then the third team that I was disappointed in is Nola. And now this isn't because I think the kits that they've given are bad or anything like that. I actually think they're very nice. The Harlequin design for the home kit is fantastic. And the away kit is similar to what they had in 2020. But there was also another kit they had in <laughs> 2020, which was beautiful. And it seems that they are just, it seems that if they had that sold, as one of their kits, they may as well just print money because it's oh, hoops. Mardi Gras. Yeah, the Mardi Gras so, kit is fantastic. And the fact that that's not one of the options available. Oh, no. Yeah. So I was listening to the uh, the uh, Red, uh, Red, Black, and Blue podcast, um, and they were kind of doing their little, prepping myself for, for tonight's episode, um, and they were doing their rankings. And one of the things that they brought up with with a lot of these teams maybe only doing two jerseys is like announcing some of the the third jerseys as like Fourth of July you know weekend you know they oh, got that's a big true. game we can do that this year you know can, like they, they there are, there are options you know that that can pop up I don't know when Mardi Gras How, is okay Dan you just brought up something that I've never thought about before How like, cool would a Toronto Arrows Canada Day kit be. Because we can, yeah, it'd be we can pretty, it'd be pretty, pretty we cool. We can do that this year. We play through yeah, July. That, that is true. Like, that is like, true. like, how cool Mardi Gras be? is February this, the uh, February the sixteenth. So, so you know they can do the like opening weekend of the season. Yeah, so the though, that's a, can... that's February sixteenth. That's that's it's a training it, camp. That's it's training camp. Before. But what, like what I'm saying is like yeah, they could do their weird. first their first game of the season. Be like, ah, we were a little bit lazy and we had a late Mardi Gras. And then kind of announce yeah, that I, jersey as being their first thing. I think so. I, I I'm not too worried about like that jersey. Yeah. Be, like, I, think, I, you know, I, I have a feeling true. that we might still see it because like when they did their promo like reveal uh, the day before in the little video, the Mardi Gras jersey was there. Yeah. So I think, I see, think that jersey is, is just going to be a late announcement. I think that'd be cool. I'd like to see some specialty jerseys from the yeah. various teams, especially like, you know, if you wanted to do something like that. Like, yeah, I never. Yeah, like the Gil Groves did their, their glory, camo jersey. Old, old Glory better have a cool 4th of July jersey. Um, <laughs> I'm just. just jersey that out screams 4th of July already. What what yeah. more can they do? <laughs> what, what, they just have like I, sparklers I, attached to their like, shoulders yeah. when just, they're running. Doug Fraser running down the pitch with sparklers on his shoulders. <laughs> fireworks coming off there's like yeah. you know they come out of like the tunnel at their new stadium and there's like bald eagles flying out um they score a try it's just an automatic flyover with some jets um I think everybody be, has to get be, it gets free hearing tests after game would, yeah exactly that would be beautiful that would be oh man old glory i think i like the old glory's kit old glory yeah. can have some fun with that um also if the eagles are ever in a pinch they could borrow it so you yeah. know practicality there um i'm you know, in all honesty, um, I kind of wanted to touch on NOLA a little bit there too, only because, and all, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but um, that w the one kit, the away kit's the same as last year, and they didn't change the numbers on it. Ooh. And in my opinion, I don't know if it's, if it's just me. You guys can let me know if I'm crazy here. Um, the listeners, send me a message at Percept the Jet on any social media network or at LaRouge Rugby. NOLA's numbers are hard to see on TV. And I don't know, like, how do you guys feel about that? Do you agree or whatever? Like, agree, disagree? Like, yeah, I shrugging, I think, shrugging isn't a good answer when this is an audio I, podcast. I, <laughs> we have YouTube as well. Yeah. I'm uh, shrugging right now. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I think it was the, I, it was either the white kit, which was the home kit of last year, had yeah. gold numbering on the back. Yeah. And when you're playing in, the Louisiana sun and everything reflects <laughs> yeah. off then yeah, I just think it was hard yeah. I just yeah my like, thing is I'm not I'm not like I'm not I'm not writing anything or I'm not stat keeping I'm just watching the game it's not detrimental to my viewing pleasure I know who I know who my favorites are I know who Kyle Bailey and Eric Howard look like they're very you know yeah they, they point out very easily 
I don't know. So, in, in, in all honesty, it's not like it's a complaint I see very often. It's just my opinion. I think the numbers are yeah. kind of hard to see. You're um, allowed to have your opinion, even though it's uh, wrong. But um, <laughs> I think the, the one other thing, though, I'll give a shout out to another team, though, because Austin had on their kits last year on their white one, they had the white on white numbers last year. Mm-hmm. And now they're doing what they should have done the whole time, the orange on white. And that just, you know, we were talking about minor changes. That might be the best minor change um, that occurred on a kit just because, yeah, like you white on white doesn't work. Um, but the orange on white, it looks good. I like Austin's kit. Um, I think it's pretty clean. Um the only other one, like, I don't really even want to call it a disappointment. And it was just like, I think Dallas has the best logo and the best color scheme in the league. And, and you, you wanted more? Like, I don't know. I was just like, I thought, yeah, like, it's not that I think it's bad. It's just like, I don't know. I just like the gradient thing going up. I'm just kind of like, it's not that I think it looks bad. I'm just kind of like, like, I feel like in my head, because of how cool their logo is and how like, I built it, up. I, I, in my head, I built it up to be like the Arrows and Free Jacks <laughs> kit. And it just wasn't there. Wasn't. But it's like, I honestly, I, I, I'm i sure it'll be one of those things where it's like, if I when I see it on, and I'm sure like when I see it on the pitch, I feel like I'm going to like it more um, when I actually see it, because like see it on somebody playing rugby, I feel like I'll like it more. But on all honesty, that's like a nitpick thing. And I feel like, yeah, um, I saw I saw I saw it getting a lot of praise on social media. Um, it was my it was in my top three. I had Utah. You had, you had I New England, Utah and Dallas. Yeah, because right. uh, like, I, I, I liked it. It's, I, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I, I think I it's know, safe. It's just, yeah. yeah, I think I think good. those those feelings that you just mentioned for me carried over the safeness of the jersey. You know what, like, I think I think kind of looking at it, I think like if you had like the certain some kits in this, I think like. If, if Dallas was red and black, I probably wouldn't like it. But because they're green and black, and I like the green a lot more. Yeah. Um, like I said, like you said, kind of going to it, Dan, I think, um, and I know, I think you said you wanted to touch on it. But I think, like, looking at the team, especially as there was the lineup, uh, the picture that the NLR tweeted out, the lineup of home kits. And I think, like, Austin and Nola really stood out because everybody else is blue or black. Yeah, and like the arrows are a bit of a more of a like a royal, like a brighter shade of blue. But then like Houston, or sorry, not Houston, Seattle, um, Seattle, New England, um, Old Glory, and Rooney are all like a pretty dark blue. And then you have the the four teams that are or the five teams that are black or have their home kit as black too, right? And even like Dallas even kind of falls into that. But like. I think, but I think too, like, I think that's why to me, like kits like Seattle's bright green. I love it. Stands out a lot. Um, Houston's bright yellow, yellow. I love it. I think also their black kit. I love it. Now that they got rid of some of the yellow, it just looks all blacks. Like when I look at it, I'm just like, that's, that's an all black. Kit. The, the details on the, on the, uh, of the, the little bit of too. gray it and looks, the, the, the socks yeah. are really nice. Yeah, it does do. It looks mean. Like it it's like mean. it's an, it's an, it's a mean looking kit. I yeah. love it. And also shout out to Houston too. Going back to the numbers, they have the best number font in the league. The big block with like the claw mark and stuff going or the tooth mark going through it. It looks great. It's a subtle detail and stuff that um when you have pictures like what's sitting behind Dan's head here or whatever, it's one of those details that you can't really see unless you um so shout out to all the teams that put out pictures of what the backs of their backs look like. like too. Um, because they I think Houston's number font kind of sticks out. Um Ultimately, though, I mean, we're talking about dis- dis- disappointments. To be honest, I don't really think there's a bad kit in the league. Um, I've, I've got some, think, I've got some gripes for sure. Okay, um, but I, like I think, like even, even like, uh, like San Diego's gray one to me is still like that's like a C, like that's like a six point five out of no. ten. Like it's not like bad, bad. I think it's bad. Okay. All right. So, so okay. So, what? Hey. I agree with Stu. I do not like San Diego's kit. I think the big thing that really bothers me about it is like I, I look at it and I see that sublimated gladiator legion helmet, helmet thing yeah. and it just they, call, it, they called it a gladiator helmet it went, in their press release gladiator helmet however they want to take it legionary gladiator it just looks off putting it mm-hmm. it looks strange it looks cartoonish to me so I really do not like them but there's another team that really disappointed me and really it was for two reasons um and it's and it's rugby ATL and the, the biggest reason is that they I, I, went I really out and like they announced this new 
I really they like the ATL's jersey. I, I don't. And, and like, there's two reasons. One, they came out and they announced that they had this amazing secondary logo. Yeah. Second, so unless, a, again. A secondary logo. Secondary. So un, unless they're, they've got a third jersey in, in the wings waiting and it's going to blow my socks off. With their their Rattler logo, which is way better than their A their 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 A that they've got. Oh man, I like the A logo. I like I like the simplicity. But are you going to tell me? Are you going to tell me that you would rather have that A than that Rattler head that they made? I like the A, man. It's simple. It's simple. It looks clean. It looks clean on the kit, man. I like. I'm not. I like. And here, here's my other problem: is is I griped about this when Rugby ETL came in the league. We don't need another team that's got gray, white, and black. You know, as what, though, their I primary think colors, that's, like I, 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 that's I, Atlanta, I, though, man. Like Atlanta. No, but like, look at the Atlanta, Atlanta Hawks. Look yeah, at the Atlanta Hawks. Red. They've got red and yellow and they black have, and gray. Black. Yeah, right. Red, so red and black are in there. Yeah. The gray, so then the use that yellow. Makes, but here's the problem: is is you've got already pre-established teams. There's a lot of red and Utah black. Utah yeah. and San Diego that are already in the team, and you talked about brand establishment. Let's. Let's make ourselves stand out. And when I look at the jerseys, if I look at the lineup and I go, okay, which one is rugby ATL? And I, I'm like, which team is from Atlanta? And I'm, I'm having a fan come over that does no, knows nothing about rugby. I'm going to pick the other two teams. Because they, they went even uh, uh, Utah or San Diego. Because they went even I don't further think, I mean, away you know what, from. Though? I, like, would you pick Utah? Because they went even covered further in away. mountains. Would you pick that? For no, Atlanta? no. But here's really? the thing. Here's the thing: is they went even further away from their black and white, and they went with the gray on their jersey. The gray, yeah, the gray, little gray gradient, yeah. Right, like it's it's they they didn't stick to their guns, and they went the other way. Eh, I yeah. love, I love, I like the 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 I quasi think... scales, but they're not standing mm-hmm. out. And you know and they've got I think... such a good team, and they've got such a good, uh, you know, uh. uh office and, and, and team that have been putting out a lot of really cool stuff. They're, though they're little like uh, Facebook lives kind of talking about some of the things that the team's been doing has been fantastic, but you know, why are we like, why are we sticking with this color when you, you know that there's two other teams that have been around since the start of the league? It's, it's I throw think, in I that think... amazing yellow. Uh, like I, Dan Murphy will post some of the Atlanta Hawks jerseys that have some of the yellow in it. And they are amazing. So why not lean into that? I, well, the, the Falcons, right? The Falcon colors. Maybe they're not the Hawks. I think that's one thing I like a the, lot. Of, so that the, the Falcons are the only team. The Braves aren't black and white. They're like a blue and red. Yeah, they're like they're dark blue and red. They have yeah, but um, they're not black and red. So why are we? They've got a red what, jersey and stuff too. They've got a red jersey. I'm not saying get rid of the red. I'm saying why in an established league that already has two teams that are black and red, why are you sticking to your guns and staying like I know you've got similar fans. But I don't think that it's going to be like an absolute deal breaker to add another color like the dark. Oh, I mean, he, I guess no, uh, or uh, old glory and um, yeah, there's there's a lot of red and New uh, England, yeah, a that, lot of red, white, and blue too, man. Forget about the blue, but like there are opportunities. It's Atlanta. That place is bumping. Throw some peach into that color. You guys are the peach city. That would have been amazing. A team with peach in their jersey. I, think, I, I would think... buy that jersey, hundred percent. Honestly, so, that's the one thing. Like we're we're talking about LA. I really hope that other kit is pink. I, I don't want to. I want to. But hopefully, the hopefully the referees. Though, hopefully the referees will pick a different color. The refs should have two. The refs should have two kits. Or Anyways, if not, if not, they should have a kit just to ref LA games or something. I don't know. That's I love how the jersey. Though. How I love how the jersey looks. I'm dis- very disappointed that I we haven't seen anything you from the rattlesnake yet. I'm wrong though. You didn't like the color scheme last year when they were introduced. No, I I, I, yeah. I said that at the start. You're, kind of, you're just you're harping on like the same thing that you. I kind of dis like. I mean, I I I, I like the kit and stuff. If that's the colors that they go with, I'm gonna judge it on what they put out. Um, I'm not gonna like what if teams on if their colors were different and stuff. But um, I I kind of like it though. Um. We we got to do one more though, one more little kit, like I guess award for lack of a better term. Um, who had the most improved kit, gentlemen? Who is the uh, the tw- the twenty nineteen or the twenty twenty to the twenty twenty one? Whose kit had the uh, the be- biggest improvement? Daniel, you wanna... yeah, Dan, you answer this question first since I'm taking over your job as hosting. Yeah, I know you, you're you're stealing my thunder. Yeah. Um. You know, I, I originally had one name, and I think that I'm changing it to Rooney. I don't think that they're the best kits, but I think that they're definitely the most improved. If you look at the two kits side yeah. to side, I love the little details that they added to the away kits. 
the new, I think the new logo too. The, the, the new, new logo. logo is is really sharp. Sorry, I had a fly flying by me. Um, and I like the little the little like uh, the, the the stone. Um, I guess it's some type of like stone flooring that's super popular in like Grand Central Station and stuff yeah. like that. Um, the, on that on their um, on their home jersey. So I I think Rooney definitely, in my opinion, is the most improved. I'm gonna agree. Um, yeah, as you said, it's not one of my uh, most favorite kits. Uh, it still has that um, line patterning that's similar to San Diego, which won't uh, help anyone who's uh, more akin to the forwards than they are the backs and when it comes to uh, physical uh, shape. Um, but I love the horizontal stripes with the names of the boroughs on the away kit. Um, orange and blue are very I was gonna say, Stu, Stu, that's a that's a thing that you love you were saying that you love too the not the non-white road strip too right like the the bright orange there yeah a non-white away kit is fantastic i think the only white they use is for light accenting and that's it uh the orange away kit may be a problem if they're facing austin or um in austin but obviously there'll be a uh, concessions made for such a thing I love the naming of the boroughs on the um, horizontal stripes. And I've got to say, horizontal stripes are much better than vertical stripes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I did love, um, you know, one of the other things I did love about the kit drop was um, the MLR teams were very active on Twitter, kind of engaging with fans with their uh, the various opinions on the kits, whether they would be good or bad. It was like they seemed to always be like if people were talking about the kits or whatever, they were involved in the conversation, which was awesome. And I did kind of love that Rooney did a ranking of all the kits and they did tied for first was all the MLR teams. And I think it was second was NBA, third was NHL, and then fourth was like M or NFL. And then like fifth was Major League Baseball. And I was just like, so Ro Rooney really went full, full 180 on baseball jerseys. Um, <laughs> so it's um, distance themselves as much as they yeah, can. As much as possible. So I did like that little tweak. Um, I honestly, I also had Rooney as uh, my most improved um, just because, yeah, like, I think it's, it's significantly better than better than last year for all the reasons that the two of you have already mentioned. Um, so I'm not going to talk about it too much longer, but like I, I kind of touched on it earlier, man, I think the best, the best individual innovation is Austin putting their numbers in bright orange. Just, I, I think like, that's just, that's a simple, like, if we're going to talk about like things like Dan, like just tweaking the kit. Cause they can keep the, the burnt orange and everything and they For can sure. help build that brand. But that kid is significantly better because of that minor change. And also no gigantic football numbers on the front anymore. Um, which is another big positive change from the Austin Gilgronies. Um, so I think overall, because of the massive overhaul, I think it's gotta be the, the most improved kid is Rooney. Um, I think it's great. Um, but I think, um, if you're going to talk like some of those minor changes that Dan was talking about, I think you got to uh, give that to uh, to Austin just for like the, I mean the football numbers on the front just look bad, so getting rid of that's good. But just the slightly slightly tweaking that that number font is uh, and to making that bright orange too is is a nice touch. So, um, but well, one one thing one thing really nice about about the kit reveal too is six unless I counted wrong six of the thirteen teams also had major sponsors on their jerseys. Mm -hmm. On on release, yeah. and a lot of which, them, a lot of them had multiple sponsors too. Multiple sponsors, but so yeah. that you know that that goes a big way, especially when you have you know uh, the the you know and, and a handful of them with, had, with handful of them had new sponsors too. New sponsors too, yeah. but I think you know with AGs not doing the big big numbers on their front, and you put, and uh, you can put a you can put a big sponsor, there. slap yeah. somebody on there. So that's that's which, a good which is which is step. realistically like I mean I know Utah like they kind of the numbers are a lot smaller. Um, over their stripe there, but I think like that was I think that's one thing why I don't like the idea of having numbers on it. Although I feel like Utah's kit is honestly so good that I'm almost willing to forgive the number on the front. But I'm curious to see like I hope they get a sponsor for the front of their kit. Yeah, and I'm just kind of curious to see like if if the front starts to look a little too busy. With My number. question is is what is the Free Jacks going to do? What are they going to do? Is it going to look natural with an ad there? 
Well, of course. Like, I mean, it's like it's in look, between the piping. Think, like, it, it's gonna be. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Like, hey, the, what you gotta do, like, look at the arrows kit though. They got the Honda logo like in a stripe, right? You can put it in that gap depending on. It depends. Theirs, theirs is pretty it, tight, but yeah, it depends on. It depends on the shape of the sponsored logo. And I mean, in all honesty, it's like sponsors are like sponsors on the front of the kits are a necessity. And hopefully you get ones that you're maybe you're able to say like Honda, Honda on the arrows, I think is a great example where it's like Honda, like they're lets them instead of making their logo red, right. It's like Honda, like they're changing the color to match the kit. Right. So it's like, there's not like a bright red Honda logo going across it. It's either blue or it's white and it matches the kit and it looks good. It looks kind of tied in. It almost looks like the sponsors part of the design. I think even um, old glory DC, the uh, cuisine solutions, um, it being, yeah, there you go. Dan, move your head a little bit. Um, but um, it being red, it blends in more. It matches the colors sure. of the team, um, which I think kind of helps. I remember like, um, can't rugby Canada being sponsored by DHL with the bright yellow band? It's so like, shocking. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it is like, and it's not a knock against DHL and stuff. The DHL, that's their logo and stuff. Obviously, like they, that's what they want on the kit and stuff. It's just it it, stick, it makes it stick out a little bit more. I think if you watch, um, like watch like the Autumn Nations Cup or watch any international rugby and stuff, like the the All Blacks have like the um, the AIG logo that's obviously white right so it matches the colors there the black and white um like um o2 when they sponsor like ireland or the, who do they sponsor o2's on like what ireland and England ireland um so it's like they the o2 is is done to like match the colors and stuff france has a, a kit sponsor or a sponsor that's just in white too right and it's like if you can kind of take that you can kind of mix it in so i mean I, i'm optimistic that like you know every team like even like every team especially teams that have stripes if you want to put a a sponsor on it is going you're going to have to um, yeah, this should be kind of do some you're gonna to have to do something to kind of make one the sponsor logo stand out but you know i mean in all honesty i i'm fully i'm all for like every single okay. team having a sponsor so it's just um you know hope, hopefully by the time the season starts um everybody's walking out with a sponsor on the kit and um you know, regardless of what it looks like, uh, I'm going to be happy to see that. All right, guys, we're going to, we're going to roll along because we got to keep this, this show on the road. Um, and it has been a busy week and a half uh, for Canadians and MLR. Um, and we're going to start with the big fish and the big fish. He's been, he's been in their pond. He's been in their, their cooler for, for a few weeks now, but it's, it's, it's official. Uh, DTH Vandermerver has signed with the LA Giltinis. Um, Absolutely. It's been rumored for months now, and it's the, 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 the you know now that they've kind of started rolling out their roster. Uh, he has uh, announced it. Um, my question to you guys is: We've talked about DTH a ton on this podcast, and after seeing him with the Miami Suns in the World Ten Series, do we think that he's going to have the same effect with the Giltinis that he had with with Canada and Glasgow Warriors and the Scarlets? Like, is is he given like does he automatically have a jersey? I mean, we haven't seen the rest of their roster, so we don't know. But yeah. what are the what should the fans expect from from him? Um, you know what, Dan? I think you kind of bring up an excellent point um, with the we haven't seen the rest of the the, the um, roster yet. But yes, yeah, he has a jersey. Um, I feel like you're not you're not signing him him to not play him. Um, so I think like or if if he doesn't if he doesn't, I want to see the guy that takes it from him because it's going to have to be a damn good player. Um, I think obviously you know we talk, we've talked about DTH on this podcast a lot because he's absolutely unreal. Um, he you know obviously he's a Canadian Canadian player that but like is like a genuine elite winger like on the world stage. Obviously his thirty eight tries are the most all time by a Canadian, but he also has like the most tries in the history of the Glasgow Warriors. Um, in between for during the decade between 2010 2019 he's nobody in pro 14 scored more tries than him he led over a course of 10 years he nobody had more tries than dth vandermerver in one of the best leagues in the world um you know i think i think dth um is probably like deserves to be talked about in the conversation of the greatest canadian players ever probably also like some of the best north american players of all time too and like i think i think like his accomplishments kind of speak for that um and like i said like it's it's tough to really evaluate what la's lineup is gonna be because we don't know enough about it yet 
Um, they're slowly kind of rolling it out. What have we got up to, boys? Uh, what do we got? Like eight guys, seven, eight guys out now. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not really sh- sure what the final number is there. Um, it, I think it's interesting too to bring over Adam Ash as well as uh, me and Stu um, mentioned on last week's podcast. So he gets a Glasgow Warrior teammate, um, and I think yeah, I, I think honestly, like I think DTH is a guy that, um, and even like guys like Bryce Campbell down in Austin, uh, who I know we're going to talk about too. Um, is something that the league I think the league really needs right is you know it's really cool bringing over guys like Rob Shaw and Nanu uh, and Bastero um, and guys like that but I think it's awesome to have a guy like DTH who is can be classified as a domestic player who understands like you know he played high school rugby in Canada he went through the uh, like the you know the U20 system program the age grade program and stuff it's like so you have a guy that, you know, became like one of the, like an elite player in the world um, to the extent where he's a franchise leader in try scoring. And like I said, he led the pro 14 in tries. Well, and he, um, and he's a guy that like American athletes yeah. and American rugby players can, yeah. can, can look up to, you know, yeah. he, he was like, a guy hey, that, like, look, but that's the thing though. It's like, you can literally be like, he can be the guy that you're like, okay, look what this guy did. Uh, like coming through this system right and i think it'd be like it's it's the same thing like i put it on par like like honestly like it it would be cool to see like toward the end of his career um be cool to see a guy like ardron come back and play a couple years in mlr or something right and it's like i think if you can get some of these because it's like as cool as cool as it is it's like i think like right now like obviously like you know the mlr is you know it, it's doing amazing things for uh north american rugby but there's still like you know the premiership super rugby pro 14 top 14 like those are the elite leagues in the world and it's like it's cool to see like you know you can kind of show it and even like i say like a guy like paul is ck too where it's like you know you can have those kind of guys that you can look at to be like hey you can use the mlr to get to that league or you know it's like you can have these guys that it's like look dth was a guy that went you know, went through the Canadian system and then went over and dominated the pro 14 for 10 years or more than that. Um, But like, I think, I think that's like, so I think having a guy like that back in North America, cause it's like, we're talking like, you know, when we try to talk about like star power and stuff and it's like, you know, it's, it's cool to have guys that are genuine stars um, from like the Eagles or from the Canadian national team um, within the league. So I, I think sure. I, I'm, like, I mean, I'm stoked about that. I think, like, hopefully LA, man, like, market market them well. Treat them well. Market them properly. And, um, like, I think that'll be a good thing. Um, like, I mean, we could talk about where – I think we can talk about where he actually fits into the lineup when we know a little bit more For sure. about that. But I think, you know, on the surface of it, have, I think having a guy like DTH in the league is great. Um, mm-hmm. And, I mean, we don't, we don't need to talk about how good he actually is because it's like – you know, I mean, every we're a Canadian rugby podcast. I'm sure most of the people like listening to this are You're like, listening, we're, you know, we're, we're well aware of how good DTH Vandenberger is. So. so, Stu, I'm going to ask you then about um, his his co winger from most of the World Cup and most of the last year and a half. Uh, Jeff Hassler is is on the move, and he yeah. is going to the Lone Star State, and he signed in Austin. You know, what does this mean for Austin? And does Austin have one of the deepest back lines in MLR? Because to me, it's looking like it's 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 them and the arrows are are really stacking up that back line. I would yeah. like to talk after Stu does. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I was actually going to mention that I think the deepest back line at the moment would be the arrows. But Austin is surely uh, biting at the heel trying to uh, claim that top spot. Um now, when as a Ospreys fan, I've known Hassler from when he was competing for the Ospreys in the Pro 12. Um, when the press release from um, Austin came out and he was talking about how lifting the MLR shield with Seattle was his first um, championship victory for as a rugby player, I'm not going to lie, that hurt. Um, well, I mean, hey, Stu, Stu, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. If, uh, like, if you haven't heard. The Ospreys aren't very good. Like, Don't listen I'm, I'm to just, do, just keep going. It, it's fine. He's I'm, just, I'm sorry, he's just I'm having sorry one of those nights. Broke some he's back. having one of those also, nights also, where also he's Dan, being Dan, Dan, if you didn't know either, the, the Leafs aren't very good either. That one, that one breaks my heart too, but it's unfortunate. Yeah. 
What? Right. Yeah. Anyway, focusing on what I was talking about. Um, so when it comes to Jeff Hassler, he is a, you know, he's a, he's one of these game deciding wingers. He can take the ball. He can do the business. I mean, even when he signed for Seattle in 2019, it was around about midway through the season and he had a clear impact um, when it came to the final uh, few games of the season and even in the postseason as well. Um, unfortunately, injury stopped him from playing a bigger part as he would have wanted to in 2020. And obviously COVID did the rest. Um, so it's been a few years since we've seen Jeff Hassler put in the work for an, in, an entire season um, or the majority of a season at least. Uh, but from his time with the Ospreys, he definitely has the skills. And from his time uh, playing with Canada that I've seen, he definitely still has the ability. Um, when it, if it comes to international duty, I think he's um, in the twilight of his international career compared to uh, DTH, who has um, said that he's calling time. Um, but I definitely think that Austin's backline is going to be much stronger than last year. Obviously, the Arrows played Austin first in uh, the 2020 season, and uh, Arrows came away with a bonus point victory, which was always lovely. But I think if uh, that was to that matchup was to happen again in 2021, I don't think it would be as um, as straightforward as the Arrows had last time. Um, so, so I feel like in, in saying if, if, if Austin has one of the deepest back lines, I think the arrows to me, the arrows have the deepest back line in the league. Um, I think we, we did I not it. say we did, did, we did. I, what I asked the question, I also pointed out that I said the arrows, the arrows and, and the Gilgronis were, were close. So, so okay. I'm going to read out some names. From you. All right. Um, Younger, Gale, Foley, Mayer, Feeks, Maupin, Dominguez, Eloff, Rogers, Duplessis, Coleman. Yeah. Okay. So the so, Gilgronis so. now have Hassler, and we're talking about another guy that they have uh, in just a second, Bryce mm -hmm. Campbell. Okay. They have their top pick, Louis uh, Setiama, who's going to be playing. Roderick Waters, who actually was quite impressive last year. A former All Black. Roderick Waters Frank, is very good. I like Roderick Waters. Yeah. Roderick good. Waters, Frank Halali, and then, and then, uh, uh, Zizan Elek, uh, Elon Pudik, who was like all over the place. He played like oh, 10 good, in his man. time with Austin. He played nine, 10, 15. Like the guy can play at almost any position. So, and these are just the people that we know. So yeah, I, I just, I'm just saying people that if we healthy, know it's, Nola, those are just the people, but I think, I think though too, though, like to me, like the measure of depth to me is who if you put out the best back line you possibly can, how good's your second best back line? That to me is the measure of death. And that's where I think one Toronto definitely has tossed them. Oh, beat, for sure. And Nola definitely has them beat on that too. Um, for now, we don't, again, we don't know who else is coming. No, um, no, no, we, we don't, we don't. But I think, I think, I think to have a discussion on the deepest back lines in the league, um, you have to include Nola. That's and fair. That, that is a Nola. fair point. I don't know. I don't know what we're my doing. apologies to my apologies to Nola fans. That is, it is a very good point. Uh, but let's talk about some of the depth because um, they went shopping again. They grabbed another Albertan and they grabbed another Canadian in Cole Davis, um, who also signed. That's going to be my question when you're rhyming off the Austin backline. It's like, are we doing like a spoiler thing on Cole Davis right now? Of like, we have to wait till like later to reveal what? Like, no, he's, uh, he's literally the next guy on the list. Uh, so my question, and, and and you know, maybe both you can quickly uh, quickly answer this is you know. I just rhymed off the list of, of yeah. people, you know, uh, Jeff Hassler. He normally plays wing, but we saw him with Seattle also play center. He's played center for Canada. He's also played center uh, for the Ospreys. So, you know, he's got a little bit of mobility in terms of where he can put, if you, if you look at like you throw a roster right now out there for um, the back line for the Gilgronis, does Cole Davis slide into your starting lineup if everybody's healthy? Uh, I don't, honestly, I, I don't think so. Um, I think like Davis, I think, you know, he's got five caps and stuff for Canada. He's played a little bit of sevens, had a little bit of injury troubles. Um, like he's, he's really, 
he's a really powerful runner, very strong, um, super fun highlight reel that he has. Um, Rugby Hits Media, I think, did. It's just basically him dragging people around the pitch. It's great. <laughs> um, so he, he's a tough man to tackle, a tough man to bring down. Um, honestly, though, man, like going back to it, like Frank Halat put up some, like, I mean, unreal numbers last year in just his three games um led austin and try scoring had i think 255 meters carried in just his three games um and you know i mean like he's an all black i mean he's he had one cap but one cap is enough for me to call you an all black um once once you get one you are an all black um so i mean like that like i i think you keep him and then i think you kind of go i think i think you go with hassler on the other on the other wing and then like, I'm not really sure. Like, I mean, I think Halai, I think, has played a little bit of center, too. I think they kind of have him listed as that. I'm not – I mean, maybe maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, but that's where I would kind of go. Like you said, maybe you have to shift. But I'm – you know, like, I think I'm kind of also waiting on maybe they maybe they bring in a different center. Um, or you have, like, kind of like, like – I mean, I think you kind of go – you might have to do that, too, or whatever. I, I, I wouldn't ex- – like, I think – I wouldn't expect him to start, especially like if you're to just break down the four wingers and you have to pick two to start, I think it's, it's Halai. I think it would be Halai um, ha- and Hassler. And then if you want to, sh- like you said, shift Hassler to center, I think, and then I think he has to beat out Waters for that. And I think wa- Waters impressed a, a lot of people um, last year too. I think he had a, so I think right now it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, he was the guy there last year. So maybe, maybe he's got to do something to lose that spot. Um, but sure. I, I don't. I don't think Davis is like immediately, especially with Hassler showing up. I don't think Davis is immediately like into the lineup on the wing. And you know, there, there's been one more signing uh, that has a Canadian flair to it. And Utah just kind of released the whole roster. You know, they yeah. said, "Who cares right. about slowly putting things out? Let's do it all at once." And you know what? But you know They've what? done they, it every every they previous year. In, they did it in front of the fans um, that they had there for the final Warrior Selects game. So um you know it's very unique and really cool that one yeah, they were able I mean, to do that especially yeah especially if you're able to do that during covid um like that's um like i don't know how how much the fans got to interact with the players or anything after if they did at yeah. all um but it's cool it's cool to see some of those guys be able to come out do like you know give the little wave to the crowd and everything um so i mean like i don't know i don't know i wonder if that was something that Utah planned all year and then it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back Maybe. and pushed back. Um, but either way, I'm glad that it was, I'm glad that it was out. A um, couple of fun names in there. Mikey Teo, Paul Mullen, um, San Diego, tough off season for them. Um, but, um, you know, anyways, move, uh, moving on, obviously Fraser Hurst, the lone Canadian that they did bring in. So UBC scrum half also played, you know, Canada U20, um, he played on the uh, 2017 team of Canada U20, which uh, looking up before this has um, th- quite a lot of MLR talent on it, which is kind of cool. Um, Kelly, Barton, Thiel, both Thiels. Um, D- Cole Davis, who has been now newly signed as well. McRogers, Keith Ng, Liam Murray's on that squad. Um, and um, so Hurst was the starting scrum half on that. The backup scrum half was some guy named William Persilier. Um, so... Uh, who actually did uh, Priscilla started the one game that they won though. Um, but, uh, but I mean, I think with Hurst obviously playing for UBC, I think as far as like he played last year, that in the 2019, 20 season. Um, so I guess he would have been draft eligible by the rules if Canadian players were draft eligible. Um, but I mean, like, honestly, like he, he's, he's a great scrum half, man. He's got a really accurate pass. He's um, solid um, with his boot as well. And I think one of the, the good points of his game too, is like, he is very good defensively um, and able to like bring guys down. If they do get that line break, even able to track a play well, um, kind of looking at um, the Utah roster. So it's, it's him and uh, Michael Basca right now. Um, so those, those are kind of the two scrum halves with Dwayne retiring. Um, so it's, um, like, so I think unless Utah has got a couple more guys that they're going to announce, which I guess they probably are, um, is, um, so this kind of looking like he's got, like right now, based on the scrum halves right now, it's looking like he'll get a good chance to play on that team because it's just Basca. So, um, hopefully, uh, we'll see, we'll see how that kind of pans out, but, uh, it, uh, ultimately kind of bodes well for Canadian rugby. We now have with the signings this week of DTH, Hassler, Davis, and Hurst. 
Um, we are now up to 21 Canadians playing on the 12 American, American teams. teams in Major League Rugby. Um, so, and then, and obviously too, like we're saying that, and the team with the, historically, the team with the most Canadians, Seattle, is really still hasn't announced the roster yet. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's very promising for um, Canadian rugby yeah. that we're like. Uh, yeah, we're, we're still waiting on, you know, uh, Sears Duru, Il Nicky, yeah. Kai Penny, you know. And, and, you know, I think, I think too, obviously in, in the Austin release too, they mentioned four Canadians, Sam Harris, their head coach mentioned four Canadians. Um, Brian's, uh, Brian Ray, America's rugby news. Um, he's, you know, he's reporting that that's going to be Regan O'Gorman, uh, who's been playing in the Mitre 10 cup for the past couple of years. Um, so that'll, that's another huge one. So that'll be 22. Like you said, all the guys that you just listed off from um, Seattle there, Dan, um, the guillotinis i think i think i saw like an interview a while back i could be misremembering so i mean if i'm wrong i'm wrong um but like i think like they they were using canadians as like a plural term so hopefully there's a couple more guys on that um we should just but, have like after the season for like our own just fun we should just have a, a southern canadians versus the air arrow canadians just have like a yeah have a match yeah like uh, like that that would be fun hey i mean hey like the the nhl is going to an to an all canadian division apparently so it's like you might have to do something um who knows um but uh yeah like i mean so it's good to see and then hopefully you know it's hopefully they keep rolling out hopefully like next by the time the next episode you know we have we have a couple more to talk about but um you know i I just you, you love to see it um and and here's here's the other thing though too gentlemen we always joke about seattle being canada south when does texas become canada south because it seems that so we got we have there's um houston has povey hildenbrand stewart murray um austin has hassler davis abdomenum and um uh and possibly o'gorman that's i was trying to think of who i'm forgetting but then i remembered it's you know um he hasn't been officially announced by the team yet but i guess and hank and And hank Hank stevenson in dallas um so there's there's uh, there's nine Canadians now looks to be uh, playing um, in Texas. So, uh, but yeah, I know we, we make the jokes about Can- uh, Seattle being Canada South, but when is when do we just jump jump the ship and go to uh, Texas is the cumulative Canada South? Although I guess that's maybe unfair to the state of Washington because Texas has three teams. But yeah, yeah. it is. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna move on now, and we're gonna finish up with uh, some exciting news in. The- uh, women's rugby and that was that the world cup which is happening next year in 2021 uh, released their pools and holy moly if you are a fan of big international rivalries these pools are just fantastic and if you're listening on the podcast that was a chef kiss it was <laughs> very exciting uh, if you do not know um, New Zealand Australia and Pool A uh, France and England are in Pool C and in Pool B, Canada and the U.S. will be facing off in the same pool to decide who moves on, which I'm super excited about. And, and one of the things that frustrated me over the last World Cup is, is Canada had such a great uh, tournament, but they had one bad loss to New Zealand, and they were out of m- making it to the playoffs. So I'm excited about um, their chances. What do you, How do you guys feel? Stu, I want to go to you first. How do you feel about the pool that that Canada has been, uh, been put in. So, um, so we can only say that they're playing in the U S at the moment, because due to COVID the teams that would occupy Europe one and Asia one haven't been able to play. And therefore we can't announce them at the moment. Um, so because the number of teams have increased to 12, um, it's going to be a case of the top two teams from each pool, um, will go into the quarterfinals as well as the um, two highest third-ranked teams. And I've got to say, I can see Canada making it into the quarterfinals no problem. Um, unfortunately, I can't find the structure of how the quarterfinals will shape up, so it's not possible at the moment to see like um, who they would be facing. Um, but... I think it's fantastic for um, the sport to have a guaranteed rivalry match in every single pool. I mean, when Australia was drawn for Pool A, you could hear the audible reaction 
in the room and everyone knew that was going to be the uh, big ticket that everyone was going to have to buy. Um, the only downside I'd see from these pools is that I would have preferred Wales to be in pool C and South Africa to be in pool A. And then we just have the straight up tri-nations in pool A. And I think no matter which way you look at it, that would be a mouth-watering pool to watch. And I would feel terribly sorry for the repercharge winner who I would have to face two, never mind all three of those teams. Um, that's the thing. Only, the only pool at the moment that is filled um, with teams is Pool C. England, who I believe are currently ranked as the world number one. But if uh, one of you gentlemen could uh, check that for me. That is um, correct. It is great. Fantastic. Um, France as well. That seem to be uh, coming along um, as well. Uh, South Africa and Fiji, I believe, were two nations that weren't um, automatic qualifiers. So it may be interesting to see how those two nations um, uh, battle for um, third place, because I have a feeling that that could be a big, uh, big game to watch in the tournament. Uh, unfortunately, the only other teams that we know are going to be that will be participating in the repercharge tournament is Samoa, who's occupying Oceania 2. And Kenya and Colombia are taking part in a cross regional repercharge playoff, which I'm not entirely sure about the logistics of that, but the winner, <laughs> the winner of um, that will go into the final repercharge tournament. And then we have uh, the other two nations of Asia 2 and Europe 2, which will be decided by those individual tournaments. So, you know, there's still um, three more teams that are going to be in this World Cup. Um, their odds, I'm going to say just for, on paper, aren't looking great at the moment because um, Canada, uh, one of the top ranked teams in the world um, and uh, clear distance at the last World Cup, at least, were from the United States. And so I can definitely see Canada make it into the quarterfinals. Uh, however, it this is the hosts uh, World Cup and they are the defending champions. I think it's uh, a fool's decision to look past New Zealand on home turf in any uh, form of rugby. If, if, um, there's a, if there is a rugby tournament that is being played anywhere in the world, but especially in New Zealand, um, New Zealand's the favorite in yeah. all the time. No, absolutely. The, the world That's... rankings don't mean anything. If you're exactly, like, yeah, yeah that... they don't mean anything other than like we all like the world rankings can change during time, but the world rankings in your head are New Zealand yes. one, and then we can shift everybody else after. Yeah. Um, so New Zealand is always the favorite, no matter yeah. no matter where it is, but especially in New Zealand. Um, yeah, but um, I think one of one of the best things I heard. Uh, for uh, this World Cup is saying that uh, women's rugby isn't a cost, it's an investment. And now we all know that uh, things like the Rugby Championship or the Tri-Nations or uh, the Men's World Cup, so for example, that took place last year, there's always going to be like the big sellout games, you know, New Zealand, South Africa in the group stage, uh, England, New Zealand in the uh, semi-finals. Although to be honest, any of the semi-finals and finals, I think it was very difficult to get tickets for after the official uh, ticket ballot. Uh, Wales, Australia, for example, in their pool game, you always know there's going to be um, great matches coming up. And I think uh, with this World Cup, like New Zealand, Australia, Canada, US, England, France, those rivalries are probably what's going to set this tournament apart from previous Women's yeah. World Cups. I think that even though this will be in New Zealand, uh, obviously we don't have the uh, timings of the games as of yet but come 2021 I think the earliest kickoff will probably be about uh, I think it's roughly like 7 or 8pm it would be over here um, and if you're listening in BC or on the west coast um, even better because it'll be uh, just after work and then you have an evening full of uh, rugby world cup games to follow along to I think, and if i think new yeah, zealand's a little bit worse than that is it not is it not going to be like like i feel like they're going to be like a lot of like 3 a.m games or something no 
Uh, well, I'm that's what into- that's what like the, it, it, you know it, it yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I had this discussion with someone. Uh, World Rugby put, you know, what would be your your perfect pools? And and I put that I wanted Canada and the U.S. Yeah. in a pool together. Uh, I did it from from the Rose Rugby Twitter account, and someone commented on me. You'd rather you'd rather see um, Canada play the U.S. than Australia. Yes, and uh, and you know, uh, yes, in, in terms of like quality. Uh, uh, you know, content. I would love to see the, the the Australian team. I'm sure that would be a great match. But I want I want women's rugby to grow in North America, and by doing that, I need to have Canada play the U.S. on the biggest stage possible. Yeah. I, then I the, then the person went on to say, well, they need to have more test matches, and that is that is a whole different conversation. I think. Uh, yeah. Dan, but Dan. but it that's that's what needs to happen. Canada and the U.S., which is always a good match. Um, Canada's kind of had the the best of them the last, you know, the whole last World Cup cycle. But the, the, the players have already been been texting each other and chirping each other. Again, I was listening to the Red, White, uh, the Red Black, and Blue podcast, and they're saying that uh, uh, Kate Zachary, who is just is a stalwart for the U.S. team, was texting her her friends on the Canadian team saying. Oh, you're going down. Like, yeah, you know, no. you know they're all, the banter has already started, right? So That's, we want this to grow, and this games like this is going to make that happen. No, yeah, I completely agree. I think I think Stu kind of nailed it when he mentioned that, like, um, when Australia was drawn into Pool A with New Zealand, the reaction from the crowd—it was the only time the whole thing the crowd reacted. It was just like, oh, yeah, sweet. Uh, Australia, New Zealand in the same pool. This will be fun. And I think, like, I had the same reaction, too. When, like, I I did, like, I was kind of watching it at work, like, on my lunch break. And, I like, I genuinely did, 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 like, a fist pump when I saw USA get, USA and Canada get pulled into the same pool. Um, for, for that exact reason, Dan, as you mentioned, like, the players kind of chirping each other a little bit already. Um, like, sport, sports are um, a lot of fun and you know, but I think, and obviously, like having these big rivalries though are kind of what sells the game. And like sports can always are always fun, but it's like they're always a little bit more fun with a bit of hate mixed into it. Um, so I mean, if you can build up that rivalry, um, whether it's the New Zealand, Australia, Canada, USA, England, France, like honestly, I don't think if world world rugby if if world rugby was going to rig the draw, this is the draw that you rig. <laughs> like you could not come up with a better draw. Um, and then like everybody else kind of falls into place after that, but it's like, you have the top six teams in the world and they're all in a pool with their biggest rival. Like when world rugby saw that they had to be like, sweet ka-ching. Like where there's, yeah. there's well, this three, ga- three games. We don't even have to worry about selling tickets to. Um, yeah. Cause that like, that's locked up. Um, and, and you know, especially that uh, that Aussie New Zealand game too, right? The black oh, black friends, why it'll be unreal. Um, Canada USA, man, like yeah, I'm I'm hyped up for that already, man. Like that's gonna be so much fun. Um, like that's gonna be so much fun to watch, and it, it'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. Like I can't wait to sound and just see the build up to this tournament for sure. Um, and like, yeah, like the, you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't have asked for a better draw. Like under no circumstances could you have, you you have come up with a better draw for that. It'd be the same thing. Like I mean, I know like you know like it, it'd be kind of cool too. Like if that ended up being like the World Cup and stuff, it's like you know like as much like as I just kind of feel like as much as I'm like I want Canada like I always want to see Canada succeed against no matter who they're playing. But it's like there, there's one team in in the world that I never want them to lose to, or whatever, and that's Team USA. If Canada, if Canada has an international year and say they go like one and twelve, or whatever, as long I'm as that per- one, I'm is perfectly the fine with it. As long as that one is the USA, like I'm fine, and that goes for the men's, the women's, the sevens teams. Just don't lose to the USA, and I am happy about how your season. <laughs> um, that's how I kind of go with it. Um, All right, well, but- well, Jim, I think we're gonna we're gonna end off there with uh, Derek's statement of make sure you beat the US. Yeah, just beat them. Be- uh, if, I will- if Canada and- beats the USA, wins their group pool. We'll- like Canada could not advance in the group as long as they beat USA. And I'll be like, well, that kind of sucks, but no, hey, I, you, you know what? I can't USA. with, 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 if it was the men's maybe, but the women's, I have too much high of expectations. Yeah. No, realistically. Yeah. The, the women's like, we like maybe to talk about that for a little, a little minute. Um, the women's team has a legit shot to win a gold medal at this tournament. Yes. Like they, they can win the world cup, which I think is 
like is is an awesome thing to actually kind of be like they they can win the world cup it's not like it's not out of the question for them to do it and like you said the last time they had it they ran into new zealand which i mean hopefully different pools they run into new zealand a little bit later on in the tournament a little more tired of a new zealand yeah a little bit more banged up new zealand yeah new new zealand's obviously but it's like yeah canada's the third ranked team in the world man like they can they they can do this and uh they're they're, going to be the top team in their pool um we'll see who the other two teams end up being but yeah like that 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 pool that game to for the usa too like it'll 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 be cool because it's like that that could be for who wins the pool too and that's the great thing actually about all those rivalry games is it's like that game like those games aren't going to be like just throw away like those games are probably going to be like they're going to win something that's going to determine who wins the pool is who wins those games it's just the beauty of them being the big rivalry games um so i mean yeah like jokes aside like of like jokes of like i just want to see you beat the u.s aside can like i'm i'm hope like canada should win the world i hope canada wins the world cup canada should win the world cup yeah also, yeah why not we'll just go with that canada's gonna win the 2021 women's world cup just a blanket oh, statement boy. of that there we go oh boy well guys uh i do have one more thing to say and i i have changed my mind about who disappointed me the most and i think it's um, i think yourself? it's no it's it's san diego only because i'm looking at their their kits from last year and if you go back and you look at their away kit good. the one that had white it was fantastic and now i have to look at this gray kit like they're like the like the the san diego shield had like white or had a white background with red lettering and it looks so sharp with like the green that turned into white with the white shorts i'm sorry the fact that you went away from that i can't uh, ah i need to stop talking about jerseys for a little bit because i'm i'm so upset um but ladies and gentlemen, if you want to listen to more of our podcasts where uh, we don't get as fired up as this one, um, you can go to LaRouche nothing, Rugby. Nothing makes people more fired up than arguing about just kits. Kits. And Everyone has an and opinion on uniforms. Kits, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the, uh, the, like the most kind of, like even like you see it every time, no matter which league it is, it's always the debates of like if this looks good or not. Oh, yeah. Or whatever. Everything. It's, it's a big... Um, it's a, always always a big big news item and stuff, and I think I think kind of even shows because like a lot a lot of folks like us right now are doing the uh, doing their kit kit reviews and everything because it's 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 that and player signings to kind of talk about. So kit, kits are a lot of fun to talk about, and I mean it's fun to argue about them because ultimately it's like ultimately it's kind of like it's one of those things where it's like it's fashion, so it's kind of art and art super subjective. Um, and super subjective things are the be- best things to argue about because it's like <laughs> also, also you can just you can, everyone always you always get so heated and so fired up on it but it's like oh yeah like it, it makes perfect sense why somebody else thinks the opposite way of you or whatever but um so it's it's kind of those, those just kind of make it fun um i agree with it with derek um but if, if you, you guys want to listen to more with me? no it's nonsense i'm going to completely change my opinion now it's so fun when you agree with me man if you guys want to listen to more of our episodes, uh, go to LaRouche Rugby on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Links are all over the place to listen to more of our previous episodes. Uh, we've had a lot of really interesting interviews the last uh, couple months uh, due to COVID. We've interviewed some arrows. We've interviewed, uh, uh, you know, some uh, members of uh, Canadian rugby, whether it be in the press or uh, with the team. Uh, so uh, take the time to listen to some of our previous episodes. Uh, And we have some very exciting uh, episodes lined up for the next few weeks, so stay tuned.